Hi guys, uh, we're back with another tutorial for Unity and today we're gonna be working on the camera so if you remember last tutorials we were working on the AI having the AI stop and look at us shoot and then go on and so on so let's start working on the camera right now the camera is fixed and we're not moving it with the, with the player and you know that's definitely not something that you may want in many cases because you know except for some games where you really don't uh, don't want the camera to move most of the time you want the camera to move usually following the player somehow there are many many things that you can do with the camera but one of the things that you're gonna have in in almost all of them is that you want the camera to move smoothly between positions so um, even if you do something smart with the cameras like making them go uh, further away when you're doing when you're sprinting or something like that and then get it in get it close in when you're aiming and put it in on the you know on the shoulder stuff like that you can do all that and that's all right but uh, you usually don't want these changes to be um, to be immediate. You want smooth transitions between them, and you also want smooth transitions when the when the player move. Usually, with a little bit of delay, so it feels like it's got some weight. The camera's got some weight, some inertia. A uh, there are many ways of implementing that. There may be multiple, but I am I am I usually use one based on, on um, springs and hooks law so I use a damped spring uh, damp spring system or spring damp system I'm not sure I think it's a damped spring system where you define a spring constant and a damp uh, factor and you move the camera with uh, with that. We'll see how. I'll try to point you to um, I'll point you to to uh, videos explaining what a damp string system is in the description below. And feel free to ask any questions if you if you got them. Okay. So cool. Let's start with uh, with the code. So we wanna we want to create something that moves our camera so let's um, create a, a script called camera controller well or even player camera player camera I think that's cool because it really is the player camera you may want to have more cameras in your game and maybe you want to have a controller that manages all of them some of or a manager I don't know. player camera is anyway uh, a good name so um, yeah we got a player camera and we're gonna assign it to our main camera yeah okay so let's let's see let's work on this one so this is the um, this uh, script controls the camera that follows the player In our case, we want to have a, um, a camera that has a, uh, a top-down view. But anyway, that, that's actually something that we don't care so much about. So, um, but we are, we're, we're going to make it general. We're going to generalize it, so we're going to make it... Um, so it could be top-down or any other kind of camera. But we're going to give the full values as top-down. So, um, Um, we're gonna set the default offset. It's gonna be any vector three, zero point zero. I think it's about twenty meters height. Yeah, it's a twenty-two point five. So let's let's put a twenty-five point zero zero point zero. That's the default offset. We're gonna set a um, 
upload spring k is gonna be uh, I don't know. I mean, this is the kind of things that I, I experiment with later. Uh, the dumping constant is gonna be five thousand. So, um, this is the uh, this is basically the main things that you want to expose to the player. So, what is the default position, and what um, are your spring uh, k and dumping constant? So that means that we are gonna place the camera by default at a certain height from the player and uh, looking down on the player and um, it's gonna be um, and it's gonna move when the player moves. Okay, so let's do that. Let's start with making it simple. So let's um, just Let's move the camera exactly uh, where, where the offset says. Um, oh, there is one thing, there is one more thing that we need, and it's the target. If the target is no try to find a valid target. So if we don't have a target, we give it we try to find a play tag and we give it to the and then um, this we're gonna do an assert. An assert is a um, I mean this is usually used in in tests and stuff like that. But I like to have it in my debug builds to or not master builds, if, so to speak, uh, to tell me whether we are not um, when you have a function, particularly some places where you're meant to have some values, and if you don't have it. The function is not going to work as expected, but when this starts to tell me, hey, you're trying to call a function with some variables that you know that don't make sense for this function. So this is going to generate a problem either now or in the future. So be careful about it. So uh, yep, the tank, uh, sorry, target. No. So, what is the next thing? So, the next thing is to update the ideal position. So, we're gonna keep an, an ideal position, okay? This ideal position is gonna be right now the target. So, um, by default, we're gonna we're gonna give it the transform position, okay? And if target is not null, we're gonna say okay. Ideal, ideal pause is the uh, target position plus the offset. Fair enough, right? And update. And then mm, yeah. So in the update, 
we're gonna do the same thing for the time being we're just gonna start with the basics and then so you know we see I think it's important to go um, one step at a time so we're gonna start with the basics and we'll build from there so yeah the ideal position is gonna be again if target is no we can already Ideal position is going to be the same thing here. Okay. Mm, okay, let's work with this and then we're gonna start um, doing more stuff so well as you can see it's pretty obvious now it is working exactly there is absolutely no movement of the of the uh, tank sorry the tank of the camera just moves exactly where the tank is there is no, and it doesn't work. It's it works pretty well for a um, for a game in the top down view. I think that's okay. So um, yeah. Anyway, let's go on. Let's let's start. Let's try to add more um, and smoothness and uh, better movement for the camera. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to create a function that uh, private void update cam position. That is going to update the camera position. Position spring. We're just gonna be doing this. We are assuming that the target is not no, okay. And um so float the t time delta time update composition bit later we'll have to update We'll have to come to the orientation later too, but that's just not something we're going to be doing now. As I said before, I like to have things like this, like target. Okay. So if for whatever reason we are um, we have a problem. We'll, we'll get the problem here in the set and it'll tell you hey, you can update the camera if you have a if you don't have a valid target rather than having a null reference exception here which you know it's going to be pretty obvious too but this is even more obvious and more in your face anyway so yeah this this is, hasn't changed anything basically yes we just moved all the code to a function which you know is not gonna give us much but i uh, i felt like I, I was it was worth it anyway so let's start with the spring dump system in order to have a spring dump system we have to simulate uh, have to yeah simulate the camera as a um, rigid body or a small yeah it's, just, it's not a proper simulation but but we definitely want to have a um, things like um, the velocity of the of the um, camera Um, and for the time being, that's gonna be it because it, the position is actually the position of the camera. There is there is not much more to say there. So the ideal position is that one. So instead of doing this, let's. Do. So um, 
real position. We're gonna let's calculate offset and the real position and the current offset. So vector three offset is gonna be a ideal boss minus transform position. Let's actually do something. Vector 3 causes transform position. The transform position is a property. A property is by definition a function. Functions uh, have a cost of access. You know, you have to call the function, you have to pass the parameters and, and return the function. So, you know, add some things to the stack, return. Even though it's most likely that many of these uh, properties are going to be in line, even some of these functions. Uh, I like to make it easy for the um, for the compiler. If you do actually get a local variable here, you actually have. Uh, it doesn't matter if this is in line or not. You're actually just getting this value, and it's no local. It's in stack. And thus it has a very quick access and you can now use it in your function with uh, a, I mean almost no memory penalty while if you have it here even if it's inline you're still accessing a, the heap and well it's gonna be cached but it's not gonna be uh, but in general it's not gonna be just as good as having it in your in your stack which is which is what you do when you get a local variable. If you don't know about the stack and the heap and how the different memory types work, please let me know in the comments and I will add some reference videos so that you understand better what, what I'm talking about here. Okay, so let's calculate the offset. So with the offset, let's put the offset we can uh, offset and the current velocity can apply the time to spring system. So the first thing we can do is the dump. So float um, dump is going to be in math min and it's going to be between one. We don't want to dump more than the current velocity. So, and it's going to be a dumping times dt. So, we're going to be applying a force. The thing is, a force is going to be generating an acceleration. That force is going to be uh, minus the velocity times the dump. That means an, an acceleration is going to be minus the velocity times the dump times the, the, the time, the delta time. And we want to avoid that force to be bigger than the current velocity. That means that if the, uh, the, the velocity is bell, we're, and we're gonna apply an acceleration that is minus bell times dumping times delta time, we want time uh, dumping times delta time to be less or equal to one. And that's what we're doing here. So, bell basically, we multiply the velocity, the velocity times one minus dump, and there we go. And that way, we have applied the dump in first, and then we're gonna apply the spring. Spring acceleration and the spring force are going to be the same. We can assume that we have that our camera has a mass of one. We don't care about the mass, so that way the the, the force and the acceleration is the same. It's, it's the same here. We're assuming the same thing in the dumping. And yeah, let's um, with that in mind, we are going to be um, trying to uh, trying to apply the spring. So, 
let's calculate the acceleration. It's going to be the offset. Times the tampon um, that is sprinkling. That's exactly the hook slope. And then we apply the acceleration to the velocity. That's right, that's um, the velocity, the initial velocity, which is the current velocity, plus the um, acceleration times the delta time. Easy. Finally, we update the camera position. So, um, so uh, let's change this name to um, rename to ideal offset, and then let's uh, give this to vector three movement. This is going to be a uh, velocity times the delta time, and transform position plus equals movement. Let's see. Let's see how this works. Basically, we just you know we apply the position. This is the initial position, which is the current position, time, uh, plus the velocity times the, the, the delta time. So, let's see how it works. So now, when you move, the camera starts moving. But it's, there's some delay from It's not like it's moving immediately. It's like there is a delay and then it got a um, like a maximum time to so like a maximum distance from the uh, from the center that you can go. It really is not exactly that and that's something that we may want to have. But um, but right now it feels like that, like yeah. You're moving, like, yeah, still moving, and there is, it's like, yeah, it's it's not exactly in the center, but it's, there is a, yeah, um, like an offset from the center, that depends on the speed that you uh, that you have. If we make the spring a uh, harder, then this distance is reduced. If it's uh, even it's thirty, you see the distance is reduced greatly. If we make it smaller, we um we get a um a bigger distance. Feels more like a elastic. You can even get away. So two, for instance, yeah, it probably is. You barely can follow the, the tank while it's moving. And you know, it's, it's alright. Um, and then what does the dumping do? So let's put it to 1, for instance, and let's do it in 10. Now the, it feels more stiff. But if you see, when we finished moving, it's kind of like um, uh, bouncing around. You do, you, do, you, do. It's not. It's not completely still. It takes some time to to find the um, the right position. And if we so with the same as so with five and the same dumping, then you can go further away from the center. If we put one, you cannot go so far away. But it has some bouncing. So basically, um, yeah, it it it's making so it's reducing the efficiency of the spring because it's dumping the velocity that the spring is generating. But on the other hand, it's avoiding the spring from bouncing on and off. Um, so yeah, that sounds cool. Uh, Good. So this seems to be sort of working. Yeah, I probably would leave it in something like 
20 probably. So you can still have a little bit of margin, but not too much because I don't, I don't think benefits a lot to have a lot of margin here. So let's do something else. Um, so right now we are we are always aiming down, which is old, right? But how about we always keep track of where the player actually is? So We're going to start with the simplest option. Mm, the player. Let's look at the player. Yes, the, the simplest option is going to be this. Let's see what happens when we do this. Ooh. You see, um, this look at player is okay, but it's making us dizzy because sometimes it's moving. And that is annoying. We're gonna have to fix that, right? So the thing is, uh, right now, our one one thing we are, that we weren't doing before is that was the camera was always looking at the same direction and probably it's a good idea to have the camera look in the direction of the tank like the tank is always looking forward that seems like a good idea because you know you want to know where you're going at. I mean I want to have it in front of you right it's like that way you frame the the scene and the, the, the way you sh you're gonna move so let's um, let's do that let's say okay so the direction you move is that one, but the um, but your up vector for the camera is gonna be the direction of the of the tank. Let's let's see. So yeah, we look at the target. Oh, yeah, we're gonna give it a more up, which is gonna be target forward. kind of dizzy because it's always moving with the tank and, it take, and it's I mean I don't think this is a good option for this kind of camera okay but uh, particularly not with this turning speed this is a very it's got a very high turning speed for this kind of camera but it's okay um, We could even try to improve that. Uh, hmm, this we, we can improve that, but I'm not sure we're gonna be doing it now because this video is getting too long, and I think it's um, it's it's enough concepts for one class. So yeah, I think we are going to improve that in our next class. So. Um, 
yeah, I think we, um, we're going to be adding um, some offsets so that you don't have to look exactly where the player is, but a bit ahead. And have the target also. Well, so, yeah, let's, let, in the next slide we're going to be adding some offsets so that you don't have to be fixed on where the tank is, but maybe ahead of it or behind it. And we will, we may be adding some a smoothing of the of the um, orientation. We uh, as I'm not sure if we should use an again a, a spring dump system. Maybe we should, or we could use directly a maximum angular velocity. We will decide. Anyway, I hope you um, enjoyed this uh, this tutorial. I hope you've learned something, and see you guys in the next video. Bye.